What is up, everybody? It is Dobbs, Mr. Crockpot on Twitter. Welcome to the Movies Matrix YouTube channel. If you're new to the channel, make sure you like, make sure you subscribe. Today, we are doing a live reaction of Chapter 13 of The Mandalorian. Joining me today is my man, Loretto. You know him on Twitter, at Marcellus Durden. What's up, Lo? How you doing, sir? It is freezing. Happy Turkey Day. I hope everyone had a wonderful time. And thank you, everyone who's watching. I cannot wait for what we are about to witness. Oh, man. And Dave Filoni, we trust it is 4.12 a.m. Eastern Coast time. East Coast time. I literally just woke up. You're California, so we're, we're in this like weird uh, balance. I'm like barely. Yeah, I'm three there. hours back. I'm probably going to go to sleep soon. <laughs> All right, let's do this thing. What is going on here? <laughs> yes! What? <laughs> she looks amazing. Oh my god. I'm going to watch this 5 times oh today. God. I'm dying, man. I'm dying. How great did those white lightsabers look in that like dark tone? Oh He's my straight god! Straight ninja status right now. Oh my god! Am I dreaming right now? For real? Like what? What is happening? It was beautiful. Cinematic quality. Rosario looks great. Fantastic. I love Yoda still trying to go after the joystick. <laughs> oh man, what just happened? Ahsoka taking down like this colony that's oppressed by this ruler is so Ahsoka. So on brand. I love it. These creatures in the background are awesome. Looks like something from the mist. Kind of like dinosaur vibes too. I love it. I love the way this episode is shot. It just is straight gorgeous. Getting a little bit of last airbender vibes here entering this town through that gate. Talk about a stark contrast compared to the last episode, the last chapter where you saw Navarro and that, that colony was like rustling and bustling and people were all over in the streets and there was so much color. You look good at this. It's like the exact opposite. I want to know who that guy is. He looks really familiar. I just can't, I can't figure it out. The Mandalorian does a really good job casting these like little roles uh, of people and they're always like guys that fit so well. Even that magistrate lady, I swear I've seen her somewhere. Is that what Din Djarin sees out of his helmet? It looked like the Predator. I never knew that. It seems like he can switch in and out of his views, like... <laughs> Ahsoka looks better looks than so I good. ever imagined. She looks so good. Heart is bursting. I I'm dying. Like, how good does Ahsoka look, man? Like, it it's perfect. It is absolute perfect. Th those, those dual lightsabers, though, they just shine in these, like, dark tones. They just shine. They stand out so well. It looks beautiful. Are they communicating? I think there's definitely some type of bond force-wise, but I don't know if they're communicating per se. I, I think you nailed it. I think I think they're I think that's what it is. Grow grew? Grow grew? What? <laughs> what? I don't even know. <laughs> Coruscant Jedi Temple. You can hear Yoda's theme in the background. I have goosebumps, guys. I have straight goosebumps. I'm dying. So much is happening in this episode. It's all happening. I can't take this smile off my face. This makes me so happy. 100%. He's lost. He's just like Jin Jarn. Sa same character. Sa same kind of, you know, character trying to find their way. Lost their family. It's the same thing. He did it. Man, there's so many nods in this. That was an Anakin nod, right? 100%. This is the best episode ever, and we're not even done yet. I can't even comprehend what's happening right now, dude. I, Bro, I, I am... I'm going to watch this episode like five more times by the end of today. 100%. What? <laughs> I, can't, I can't handle this. this that was awesome! I just got to say, this is the most beautiful episode of The Mandalorian ever. Ever. It is gorgeous. 
I've dreamt of this day for so long, man. This is nuts. Is, is this real life? I just woke up. I don't even know if this is actually happening right now, bro. Dave Filoni's killing it. Every shot she's in, it's just gorgeous. <laughs> you know, I haven't seen him in a long time, but that's not Michael Bean, is it? I love how animated Ahsoka looks when she's attacking. Like, you see her mouth open and the white, it looks perfect. We don't know what she's after, correct? No clue. I'm still trying to figure out who the magistrate is. Some uh, Kill Bill Volume 1 vibes. I'm just thinking the same thing. <laughs> Get him, Mando. Get him, Mando. Let's go. I love how on one side of the gate, we have like the samurai Jedi-ish battle. And then on the other side, we have the straight Western. Totally. Quick draw. Where is Grand Admiral Thrawn? <laughs> <laughs> Grand Admiral Thrawn, baby! Let's go! Let's go! There is so much happening. <laughs> oh my god, I'm freaking out, man. Ahsoka has freed the Earth Kingdom. <laughs> <laughs> it's totally. I'm loving this like 8-bit rendition of the Mandalorian theme. Go with them, Ahsoka. My God, is this the first chapter that uh, John Favreau did not write? Yeah, uh, that's correct. And uh, I just want to say I love the way that Rosario, she just exudes like that that wisdom, yes, and that experience yeah. that it, that was Michael Bean. I just I don't know. He looked so much different. I guess he looks different older. Cool. Um, yeah, Michael Bean, the original, uh, the Ky Kyle Reese. <laughs> yeah, totally. Um, but yeah, man, um, Rosario Dawson just really gives off like that master level vibe. You know, she's just wise beyond her years, and I ugh, cannot believe this day is here, man. I don't, I don't know how to wrap my head around what just happened. Uh, the writer, you know, Ahsoka's hands down my favorite Star Wars character ever, and there was a little nugget in the back of my head, like Rosario Dawson. It was a solid casting, but having Ahsoka live action like this, the anticipation for this was through the roof. And there was a little nugget in the back of my head, like, oh my God, what if they screw it up? Oh my God, like they, they can't screw this up. And they absolutely nailed it. The look that, like you said, the wisdom, her fighting style, everything clicked here. It, it, it was beautiful. Like there are so many clips, so many just parts of this episode. You could just pause and just it was just gorgeous like ahsoka standing in the background or uh the 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 the, the intimidation of the dual white lightsabers in the background of this like dark gritty burnt forest it was perfect oh my yeah God. you nailed the contrast beautifully like every time it ignited it just contrasted with the gray tones of the of the cinematography like beautifully and, th and then we get to baby yoda who finally got a name and we got some background information on Baby Yoda. Grugo, I believe uh, we just got done watching the chapter. I believe it's Grugo. He's from Coruscant. And sure enough, you know, he's this this guy's already been trained at a Jedi Academy, at a Jedi Temple. So, like, there's so many thoughts going through my head right now. Like, at what part does like uh, uh, that species get trained? Like that must be from the jump. They are given a master and, and just harnessing uh, that that force. And that's just so cool, man. Uh, my my here, here's my big thought. Last week, after I wrote my review, I, I I really enjoyed the episode, but the episode really felt like it was a passing of the torch. My my like final take on that episode was similar to what we saw with the Clone Wars. When we saw Ahsoka, you know, was handed off from the Martez sisters to Bo-Katan. And that was like, that That began the final four episodes of the Clone Wars in season seven. And that was like where I was going with this. And that was 100% correct. Because I'm telling you, though, that was probably the best Mandalorian episode of all time. I, oh, easy. Without without question. I mean, this was, this what we saw in this short you know, what was this 30, 40 minute episode? It rivals what we've seen on screen. And I will also say with how much we got the the child's name, Ahsoka, Ahsoka in battle, Ahsoka fighting Mando for a couple seconds, Ahsoka and Mando teaming up. 
and we get a name drop of Thrawn, which oh that, came, that came out of nowhere. But you know what's interesting to me is I don't know if we're getting Ahsoka uh, going along for the ride of the rest of Mando's arc here. I think this was a sneak preview to a possible T Ahsoka Tana series, <laughs> and maybe her series will focus on her looking for Thrawn. And that is just blowing my mind right now. But oh, I'm, I'm crying, man. I'm straight crying. <laughs> Interestingly enough, though, I don't think Ahsoka's along for the ride. I think that was a farewell, and we probably won't see her again until she gets her own series or we get another season. Um, I mean, that's just my feeling. So I'm straight crying. I can't believe this just happened. But I can't even fathom a thought of a Ahsoka Tano chasing Thrawn uh, live action series. I always always wanted to have that Darth Maul Ahsoka Tano uh, TV series, which as eight episodes would be terrific, just leading after the events of the Clone Wars. But All right, like, I got the spelling from the subtitles, man. I changed my display name. Grugo. Grugu. Grogu. Grogu. Okay, I'm gonna screw that up a thousand times. Apollo yeah, I just <laughs> I played the uh, I played the subtitles over, and it's uh, it's Grogu for sure. General Admiral Thrawn, Thrawn on the big screen on a on a live action small screen, man, that has so much potential. Hands down, one of the best characters in Star Wars universe. Period. And having that tie with Ahsoka and that character arc led by Dave Filoni, man, I'm dying. Like every inside is dying. I haven't had my expectations subverted that hard since The Last Jedi, and that's not an insult. That's a compliment, because I loved The Last Jedi. I don't know about you, uh, Dives, but yeah. I I honestly thought he was, she was going to say, where's your master? Where's Grand Admiral Moff Gideon or something? But she said, throw it! I was like, ah! <laughs> oh, my God. Where do we go from here? And like you said, I, I was kind of hoping that Ahsoka was going to join on the ride with Din and Grugo. And that would have kind of led them eventually crossing paths with Bo-Katan and, and everyone else trying to get the Darksaber. I think that was st still very likely. I think Siege of Mandalore Part 2 is still very likely. Um, but I, I'm i a little... I, I, I'm not going to like... I can't complain. I, there's no way I can complain uh, on an episode that was pure perfection. This was a masterpiece. Uh, but if there was a complaint, is that could this be a one-off for Ahsoka Tano here. And I'm hoping not. I'm hoping not. I, I'm really hoping they cross paths somehow. Um, so I, how would you grade this episode? 20 out of 10. 100 <laughs> out of 10. This was glorious. And, um, you know, as you can see, I also am a huge Ahsoka Tano fan. So, I mean, I you said it best earlier. I mean, I got chills the second she ignited her lightsabers, and that was in the first a minute and thirty seconds in, yeah. if if that. And I called it. Remember, you were like over under five minutes when we see her. I was like under. I know this whole episode is gonna be all her, and my my instincts was correct. So, wow, what did we just see? I mean, we in season two we barely saw any force powers. And it just went, and I said that in my review for MoviesMatrix.com. Like, I have a feeling that that's all going to change uh, in this chapter. And uh, I, what was the chapter title? Do we know? What, I totally missed it. Do we know what? It the was the Jedi. The Jedi. Oh my God, that is great. I love how we have. The and also, cool. like, um, more so this episode, but so far, just the action choreography has been just incredible especially yeah. this episode you nailed it like the way she moves her 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 facial expressions the way she grunts the that little thing where she threw the gun and hit the guy in the face and she smirked like that is so ahsoka like it's just playful like you know she's a playful warrior she's confident in her abilities and she she perfectly captured that uh i'm just ah, uh, i'm gushing it's just amazing how how much they nailed it like thank you dave filoni but who else could have done it better? Right. Man, that just just crushed it. I, I've always heard that like Dave Filoni is not the best director. He's more of a writer and all that creator. But this was beautiful. This was start to finish beautiful. I will never forget that first like three-minute intro of this episode. That intro of Ahsoka Tano is going to go down as one of my favorite experiences ever. Um, I also... Love that ending where we saw the final fight scene uh, and we were both on the same page with Kill Bill. 
that was really cool. I actually also thought of Star Wars Rebels when you saw Obi Wan versus Darth Maul in the episode. Yeah. There was the, the slow build up, and it was yeah. like that energy, that energy, and just uh, it was just so masterclass. But I think uh, like, the I, garden, I, the garden especially, just gave me vibes when like Beatrix Kiddo faces down Oren, and then there's like snow falling, and there's like the bonsai trees, and yeah. like it just it just gave me that vibe, and they just stare each other down. Oh, baby. All right. Um, let's wrap it up. Anything you want to plug, man? Um, no, just stay tuned Sunday for our weekly Movies Matrix show down the rabbit hole. We are in episode 14. My, 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 how time flies. We break down all the latest news live every Sunday, 7.30 p.m. Eastern time, 4.30 my time. Sorry, I'm a West Coast guy. <laughs> And um, we got our Christmas draft coming up next weekend. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That's going to be fun. Um, There's going to be a lot of good ones. I have been on a losing streak. I would like to get back in the winning column. I can't even get in the tournament these days. But, you know, maybe I got to start going with what Twitter is going to vote for. And, you know, I would like to hold a championship one of these days. So, man, yeah, it's tough. It's tough when, you know, even going against your heart, in terms of these movies and versus what gets the more votes. So it's, it's, it's a hard compromise for sure. Well, you know, I think for the Christmas one, I think what my heart says and what Twitter likes is pretty much on par for this draft. I think at least the first two picks. So yeah, we'll see. There, there was a movie that we just watched and it's not a great movie, but it's such a amazing Christmas movie. That it's one of those, like it's got, I will draft it high because like, it oozes Christmas, and I, I that's I think people love it to death. But it's not a great movie. So we, were, my wife and I, were debating last night, like where would this go in the draft? Um, I'll say it right now: The Polar Express. The Polar Express is not like this like uh, amazing film, but it's just it's so memorable and heartwarming and Christmas, you know. It was definitely groundbreaking for its time. That was one of the first like exclusive uses of motion capture. Um... Tom Hanks like played like almost every single role, yeah. I think. So and they like great. captured his face and his voice and all that. So the soundtrack is so great. So uh, make sure you follow my man uh, Loretto on Twitter at Marcellus Durden. I am Dives, Mr. Crockpot on Twitter. Check out Movies Matrix on Twitter at Movies Matrix. Uh, check out the site MoviesMatrix.com and check out my man Down the Rabbit Hole podcast every Sunday night, 7.30 Eastern time. For, for Loretto, for myself, thanks for watching, guys. Ahsoka! <laughs> <laughs> Grogu!